Hello, my name is Wesley Bellman, and I'm a federal systems engineer at Palo Alto Networks. Today I'm going to do a short demonstration on how to build a custom signature on your next generation firewall. First, why would a customer want to build a custom signature on the next generation firewall? Well, the next generation firewall brings together traditional firewall capabilities, as well as intrusion detection and intrusion prevention system capabilities. Therefore, rather than having a complex intrusion detection system infrastructure, such as Security Onion, which brings additional cost and complexity, you can just implement custom signatures on your next generation firewall and then forward those logs to the SIM of your choice. If this is something you want to do, if you want to simplify your network and take advantage of all the features within your next generation firewall, then I will show you how to do that today. In this demonstration, I'm going to review a vulnerability, CVE 2022-41392, which was released just four weeks ago. And then I'm going to show how you can grab a decrypted PCAP for traffic that's going to a web server. And I'm going to do that on the next generation firewall. And then I'm going to take that decrypted PCAP and use it to build the custom signature for that vulnerability. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the vulnerability. These references are in the description below. As you can see, the vulnerability that we're going to look at is a cross-site scripting vulnerability in a product called TotalJS. If we go to the first reference, see that 29 days ago, so just over four weeks, is when this user submitted this vulnerability on GitHub to the product owners. In order to reproduce it, you log in the application, and then in this form section where it says website name, you put the script tags. I have set up a TotalJS server in my environment, so let's go check it out. Go to TotalJS server is at totaljs.paloaltoairforce.com. And just as in the vulnerability description, you can see that the this is the website name form. So this is where we're going to inject the JavaScript tags. However, first, we've now accessed this website. So let's see what this looks like in the next generation firewall. So let's go back to Chrome and we'll go to monitor traffic. You can see the traffic here. You can even see the rule, allow traffic to TotalJS server. And we can even filter on traffic going to this destination. We can see all the traffic to this server. As you can see, last traffic was at 2339, which was one minute ago. Right now it's 2340. And if we click this, you can also see that the traffic was decrypted. So we see that it's decrypted and we see that it's using this rule, allow traffic to TotalJS server. Let's go to policies. Let's quickly look at the decryption policy. I just want to show you how I have the decryption here set up. So this is using SSL inbound inspection. What's important to note about SSL inbound inspection is that you actually need the private key of that server in order for that decryption to occur. And so I do have the private key of that server loaded onto my next generation firewall for this TotalJS server. And that's the only way that it's able to decrypt it. I've actually disabled my, my regular decrypt all for my forward proxy, just so that you can see that it's actually the inbound inspection that's doing the decryption and not the forward proxy. So now let's go to the security rules and look at the rule which was firing the allow traffic to total JS server. As you can see, this is all traffic that's destined for the total JS server object, which I created. Also we'll show you is under actions. That's where you can see the security profiles. Security profiles is general threat prevention. And these are also what are used for custom signatures, specifically the anti spyware profile. Here we have the default profile of strict. You actually can't use a default profile for a custom signature. So I had to create a custom profile, which you see here, I will not apply that yet. Instead, I will cancel and I'll follow Palo Alto Network's best practice, which is rather than editing a rule directly, you always want to clone a rule. Um, I'm going to put it above. So before the rule. Okay. And it says one, I'll edit it now. I'll go, let's call it test. For source, I'm actually going to make it only traffic that comes from me, um, Wesley. And this is just for testing purposes. I'll get rid of this once I'm comfortable with the rule. Um, destination will stay the same application. And then for actions, I am going to change that anti spyware profile to the custom profile, you can set up log forwarding here to forward it to elastic, for example, or any other sim where you would like to see this traffic. So, okay, now we'll go to objects. 
The security profiles object is where the anti-spyware profile is. You can see the three objects that I talked about. However, in order to add a custom signature to this custom anti-spyware profile, I will need to build that object, which is here, custom objects spyware. Now you might be wondering, why are we building the spyware object right now before we capture the PCAP? We're actually going to use a spyware object to capture PCAP. This is because the Palo Alto Network's firewall allows you to capture PCAP for traffic, which is identified as one of these threat categories. In this case, it'll just be spyware. So I will add, and this will be our custom spyware signature. Over this, you can put anything within these range of numbers. I'll just do 690001. I will name it CVE 2022-41392. If you want to see the actual severity, the CV does show. So if we hit go to NIST, NIST says it's medium, so we can call it medium. Direction, it's client to server, and then default action will be alert. We can add all this additional information. For an actual signature, I do recommend you add as much information as possible just in case someone is coming through and trying to debug it or understand it later. And now we add the actual signatures. We're just going to build a standard signature. For this initial signature, I'm just gonna make it really simple. Remember, I'm already filtering on traffic that's coming from me and going to the server. So really, we just need something that is definitely going to fire when making this request. Let's add, we'll just call this total JS request. This will just be for a transaction. When we actually build the regular signature, we're gonna use session, which means that we can build several conditions which match across an entire session instead of just a single packet. Since we're only gonna build one condition here, we can get rid of ordered condition match. That only matters if you have several conditions and you wanna make sure that they're matched in order. I'll hit add an and condition. This part is where it gets a little bit more technically complicated and I highly recommend you check out these two references. Let's open them now so we have a list of the string contexts as well as the regular expression syntax. There are actually two types of contexts. There are string contexts and integer contexts. And either of these can be matched, or in the case of integer contexts, you can use greater than or less than in order to build a signature. And here is our syntax for regular expressions. As you can see, a period matches any single character and a splat matches the preceding character or expression zero more times. So therefore a period splat is a basic wildcard. There are some examples here as well in the documentation. So if you want to match just Trinidad uh, anywhere, then you would just do period splat and then use parentheses and put Trinidad. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to put HTTP request origin. So the origin is the website which actually makes a request. So if you log into a website and then you make a HTTP request from that website back to itself, then it'll use that website's name and place it in the origin header. This pattern would just be HTTPS colon slash slash total JS dot Palo Alto Air Force dot com, if you recall. And that's it. We can do some more complicated things um, when we actually build the signature. But for right now, I just want this to be as simple as possible. Hit OK and OK. Now we want to add this custom threat signature to the custom anti-spyware profile. So I'll go to the anti-spyware profile, hit custom. And then to add it, we hit signature exceptions. And then down here, you want to hit show all signatures. And here you find the one that I just created. Um, you can search for it if it doesn't pop up. This one did pop up. I'm enabling it. It's just simple medium. It's medium. And default action is to alert, great. Now we wanna make sure that we uh, do the packet capture. That was the, the whole point of this exercise. So instead of doing disable, I'm going to enable extended capture. There are three options here, extended capture, single packet, and disable. And we wanna do extended capture because we don't just want a single packet, we want a few different packets of this interaction so that we can characterize it for the actual signature. I'll hit okay. Now I'll show you in the device settings, if you hit device, and then under setup, you go to content ID. You can actually see here the extended packet capture length. And if you wanna change that, you can just click this gear and then you can change the extended packet capture length. So right now it's gonna capture five packets, which for me is sufficient. However, if you want that to be more or less, this is where you would change it. So now I've made all the changes to the firewall I need before running the exploit. So let's commit this configuration. The configuration is successfully committed. So now let's run the exploit. Let's review the exploit one more time. So I'm gonna to have to do quotation mark space, script tag, put something in the middle, and then close the script tag. Easy enough. So let's go back to the environment here. Quote 
quotation mark space script alerts you've been hosed and close the script tag and then apply settings so now we can see what this vulnerability actually does so first say we refresh you can see it actually does run the script it says that i've been hosed um, actually even if i log out it still does it if i close the browser reopen it still does it. So this actually has persisted. This has actually poisoned the back end. Um, this is not what you want for this web server. Let's go back to the firewall. And if we want to see if the threat log fired, we would go to monitor threat. And here you can see that the threat signature did fire. It actually fired twice. So let's see if we can look through this briefly. Now this is not very readable interface for PCAP, so we're not actually gonna analyze it here. I just wanna make sure that this is the one. So we should actually be able to search for the script tag. So you can see this does have the script tag here. So this is the one that I need. So I will export this and then we'll view it in Wireshark because that'll be much easier to read than this. So before we open Wireshark, Let's go back to our custom signature object here. And this is just a, the request. We won't edit this one. We'll just delete it after we're done. We'll create a new one. So now let's go over to Wireshark. You can see here that there was an OK message. So we want to only capture successful post requests, so ones that have an OK response. And then we'll just want to capture post requests to this URI, which have the, the JavaScript injection, as we saw in the body there. So this is a bit of advanced network analysis. Um, I'm going to kind of breeze through this. However, if you want more information, I definitely recommend checking out these references. So this standard, I'm actually going to call the CVE 2022-41392. And you can have different standards across a single threat signature. So if there's different ways to detect that threat, then you can do that. So I'm actually gonna make this a session. I will make this an ordered condition match because we wanna make sure that the request is captured before the response. I'll add an and condition. The first pattern that I wanna match is the URI, HTTP request URI. And we can actually go here, string context, URI, and you can see it's in this case, slash blog slash WP admin. But in our case, we go back to Wireshark, going to be slash admin slash API slash settings slash. Now we want this to be a post request and the way to do this only for post requests is to hit add and then the qualifier. HTTP method, and we want to make that post. Okay, parentheses here, and then we'll add another one. Um, this will be the body, uh, HTTP request message body. And let me look again at Wireshark. So again, if we follow stream see here this is the actual packet that's seen so let's copy this go back all right so let me paste this so this is what's actually seen so what we're worried about is basically quotation marks with script tags actually coming after this name so let's get rid of this and then for name, if you recall, so we're gonna put a period splat as our wildcard. And then really there could be things that come before this. So we can close out these parentheses, put a period splat, and then do another set of parentheses. Anything can come in here. We don't really care what the script is. So we'll do another period splat, put parentheses around this. In fact, we're really just worried about script, like I said, script tags coming after names. 
So period splat, this name tag, period splat, and then script, and then a close script. There are much more complex regular expressions that you can build to match JavaScript injection. But for our purposes, this is uh, sufficient. And we want to make sure that this is also part of the post request. So we will still add a uh, post here. Okay. And then we will add that response condition that we were talking about. So it'll be another and condition. And if you just type in HTTP response, um, you see actually you can do response reason, but actually if I go up here, so instead of doing a string context, as I mentioned, there's two types of context, string context, which here is called pattern match. And if you want to do an integer context, you can do uh, greater than, equal to, or less than. I'll do equal to. And again, I will type in HTTP response. And then here we'll have the code. And the response code, those who don't know, for a good request is 200. So this is our thread signature. Okay, and then we can delete the old one. Okay, then commit these changes. Okay, the configuration is committed successfully. So let's test our new signature. So if we go back to monitor and threat, so you see these are our two threat logs from before. We'll go back to environment, log in. So now we'll change it to something normal, total.js platform. So we're still making the same type of request to the same URI, but it doesn't have the script tags. Apply the settings. Refresh, and now it returns a website named normal, no weird pop-up. And if we go to the firewall, as you can see, no additional threat logs. So now let's run the exploit again. Script alert. Uh, let's try something else. Hi, this is Wes. Script. Cool. And then apply the settings. Refresh, see the website name has changed, the weird pop-up comes up again. And if we go to the firewall, we see that it has triggered. So this custom red signature is working as expected. Um, you can see it just triggered right now. And so once you have your threat signature working the way that you want it to, then you can apply it to your regular policies. So I'll go to policies, delete this rule, this old rule. I don't need any more. Then I'll go to the new rule. I will change source, to remove Wesley and keep it at any. And if you recall, it's got the custom anti-spyware profile. And so I can commit it because my custom signature works as expected. That's my demonstration. I built a custom signature for a CVE, which was released just four weeks ago. And I talked about why you would want to build a custom signature. Thank you for watching the video.